Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, September 14th Board of Selectmen meeting for the Town of Webster. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone. The first item we have on the agenda is the approval of the regular session meeting minutes of August 24th, which were sent out in advance and have been on the website in draft form. Any questions, corrections, changes? If I'll not, move to approve the regular session meeting minutes from August 24th, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Courtney, would you poll the board, please? Yes. Selectman Yes. Selectman Moore? Yes. Selectman Jolda? Yes. Chairman Becker? Yes. And the next item on the agenda is Anne Marie Pepperato. We, uh, you've been on here, oh, let's say now on the ADA six years or so, and certainly on the uh, personal advisory board as well. So welcome this evening, and we're actually sad to see you here because that means your, your official retirement from the boards is taking place. Well, I, I think, you know, we just wanted to have you come in and just so we can express our thanks to you. I know you spent a lot of time on ADA, um, and Andrew's going to mention a few uh, matters on ADA, but you've worked, you know, I think truly with your heart um, for individuals with disabilities in this town, and I think that shows uh, from what the town has been able to accomplish. So if I could, I'll, I'll ask Andrew, and then I'll touch base on the personal advisory board. Absolutely. As the Selectman's appointee to the ADA Commission, I've had the privilege of attending a few meetings with Anne Marie, and I can say she is a true asset to this town. She is a wealth of information when it comes to anything ADA related, and you are going to be greatly missed. And, I, and I, with regards to the personal advisory board, I, I did actually have a little conversation with the current chair of the personal advisory board. I think the first comment I heard back was um, how much they're going to miss banana bread. Apparently, that's the best <laughs> kept secret in town. And um, you, you're going to have to be invited back as a special guest, I, I imagine, uh, because the current chair has not had such a good piece of banana bread <laughs> in, in, since January, since the last meeting. But um, aside from the food, you know, I, I think if anyone looks at the amount of policies that the PAB has gone through, they'll realize how much work is, has occurred between the committee and the town employees, Doug, and, and et cetera. So um, you know, I, I especially want to say thank you for that, because I think we're definitely in a better place with regards to our personnel advisory board, the policies, and certainly, as Andrew mentioned, with the ADA committee. Um, so. Doug, you have anything further? And then we can ask Amory if she wants to say goodbye, or, um, but I'll let Doug, anything to follow? Yeah, so um, I think Ann was able to get so much work done, Amory, because you know every time uh, a week or so before the meeting, I got really scared and was like, oh, I'm going to have to answer to her, so I better get things done. <laughs> um, but it, it's been great working with you. Uh, it's always a pleasure. and. Uh, the banana bread is very true. <laughs> it, it is uh, the best I've ever had, so thank you. Um, I do have uh, a card for you, and uh, here's a little uh, toolkit from the town to, uh, not that you uh, don't know how to say the name, but uh, a little appreciation, <laughs> something for your uh, so. Thank you very much. Welcome to come on up if you if you want to say a few words well, or from I, there whatever no, you wish. You know I can't take the credit for everything. I mean, <laughs> but most when of the it, group yeah. started <laughs> out back in 2014 with three people, right? As a committee, with no direction, nowhere to go, um, we kind of dug in our heels and said we're going to do it because it's an issue that is near and dear to me. And uh, starting out as a committee, we kept on pushing and pushing. And with the support of the selectmen, the town administrator, 
and the members of the group, we were able to upgrade our status to commission with the Mass Office on Disabilities. And with that, we were entitled to federal grants, right. which enabled us to get some amenities for the beach and benches for up at Golden Heights. It was a long road. <laughs> I probably nagged everybody to death. But I mean, it was, I'm glad I did. It was well worth the effort. And like anything else, after six years, I'm not getting any younger. The technology is getting different. I don't even have a smartphone or a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured it's time to turn over the reins to somebody going, bring in some new ideas and some, some new energy. But I'll cherish the experience always and uh, hopefully can stay involved in some form or another. So um, basically, that's, I'm very overwhelmed by this. I'm humbled oh. by it. And, uh, you know, I appreciate your thoughts. And, well, that. and even Courtney has always been there for me, you know. I don't know how many times I called her for printouts or this or that. And <laughs> Everybody was just so helpful. Well, I think it's because so. your attitude is very easy to work with you, and I think your passion and your dedication you know. have really shown so through. It, so, you know, again, I appreciate it. It was my pleasure, and I got probably just as much, if not more, out of it than the, the town did. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. <laughs>
we've reviewed it, and the highway department has. Uh, we don't see any issues with it, so we recommend moving forward. Okay. And is there anyone uh, online? Well, is no one in in our meeting right now? Anyone online that wishes to comment on it as part of the public hearing? Okay. Uh, seeing and hearing none. Uh, I will. Any further questions from the selectmen, or any questions from the selectmen? Comments. I, I will only note on here. It does. You can see that it's moving roughly. Uh, well, it said seven feet, and it's moving more. In front of it looks like a blank piece of property. Is that property owned by the proponents of the solar project? It is. That's their current right of way access to the construction site. Okay. Thank you, Doug. And they can still access the site with yep. that pole there. So uh, I'm assuming, Doug, there are two access points. Is this, one, you use yeah. One? So uh, this is the access point that they're currently using. They do also have. Okay, thank you. Well, we may have just lost Javier. Any further questions from the selectmen? Comments? No. None? Okay, um, there being no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? Courtney, would you pull the board? We may have to wait for Tom. Um, I don't see his face on here. So if you can hold one second, Courtney, thank you. Uh, it looks like we just got our internet connection back. Okay, oh. okay um, Tom and Javier, um, can you hear us okay? We can hear you now. Okay, Javier, can you hear us? Okay, thank you. We had a momentary glitch here with our connection. So um, there, would be no, there were no questions, comments from the public. Um, there was one question in case you didn't hear it with regards to access. There's a second right of way off of Batten uh, that the proponents of the solar farm have access to. And there were no further questions from the selectmen. Les, Tom, you have any? Okay. Thanks, Javier. They may they may just be using where the pole is going to be moved. There may be enough room for their current access, which is where that is. So, um, so there being no. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't speak on that. Uh, yep. Understood. Tom, any further questions? Okay. Tom Claybert, any further questions? No. Okay. I think Lisa, you had one. So, did we get any feedback from the uh, owners of this solar panel? The only concern I have is if they have equipment that's going to get around that pole. What size is that equipment, and can they get in there? Yeah, so they're the ones that petitioned. So they're okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, there being no further questions, uh, we already have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Selecting Clay Bart. Yes. Selecting Contos. Yes. Selecting Board. Yes. Selecting Zolda. Yes. Chairman Becker. Yes. <clears throat> Now that the public hearing is closed, we will open up this matter for discussion with the Board of, Direc board of Directors, the <laughs> Board of Selectmen. <laughs> Any questions or concerns on this? I think the one comment that I, that I had heard was that um, you know, there was concern that you have a solar uh, field going in there, but that's beyond the scope of, of this particular request. And that's, I believe, already received appropriate approvals from town boards. Um, that was the concern. Um, so I, I've heard no other concern or questions. So if there are none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the relocation of the pole, uh, one JO pole on Malden Drive, relocating pole two Malden Drive approximately seven feet from the existing pole number two for the new DG site. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Selecting Claybar? Yes. Selecting Contos? Yes. Selecting the board? Yes. Selecting Zolda? Yes. 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 Okay, that takes care of that. Javier, thank you very much. All right, thank you.
So you as well. The next item on the agenda is a proclamation for National Adult Day Health Week, September 20th to September 26th, celebrating ADS hyphen voice, vision, and value. And we have a proclamation here that uh, can be read into the record. I don't know if anyone wants to read it or. Sure, I'll read it. Whereas it's proclamation declaring September 20th, 2020 through September 26th, 2020, National Adult Day Health Week, celebrating ADS, voice, vision, and value. Whereas the citizens of the town of Webster embrace all individuals who continue to enhance our community as one of a diverse culture that fosters acceptance and inclusion. And whereas the town has long recognized the importance of accessibility to adult day services for providing better living for both members and their family caretakers. And whereas local adult day services, such as Accord Adult Day Center, understand the importance of person-centered care and develop fun and engaging programming for members across a spectrum of abilities and needs with all staff working together to provide the highest quality personalized care to the members and whereas a recent published study demonstrated that interventions to lower stress on caregivers such as the use of adult day services have an effect on the body's biological response to stress. We know that caregivers are at increased risk of illness because of the long hours of care they provide and the high levels of stress they endure. And whereas employees and volunteers at adult day services care for members from a diverse population and are continually strategically planning for our ever-changing healthcare environment. And whereas former President Ronald Reagan issued Proclamation 5107, National Adult Day Care Center Week, 1983, on September 27th, 1983, to give appropriate recognition to centers offering these important services. And whereas this week has grown in significance each year since his proclamation was issued. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Town of Webster Board of Selectmen, join with the citizens of Webster to acknowledge the dedication and commitment of all adult day services and thank their employees and volunteers for improving the quality of life of their members and family caregivers. As we recognize the week of September 20th, 2020 through September 26th, 2020 as Adult Day Services Week. And the proclamation is signed on this 14th day of September in the year of 2020 by the members of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Andrew. You know, I, I think um, now more than ever, the importance of, of really good adult care centers and uh, we have one here in town that's wonderful on Cudworth Road uh, with Accord. They they do an, an incredible job and, and with everything that's gone on now with COVID and turning everyone's world upside down, um, it's more important than ever to have great care and you know we can't say enough for uh, thanking God for all the caregivers, whether they be um, you know caregivers that we take our, our family and friends to or just caregivers at home, so um, it's a great, great recognition. Yeah. Uh, Accord Daycare will be having a small ceremony next Monday morning, if any of the board selectmen are interested in attending, uh, I can coordinate that for you. So I'll send out an email. Right That'd be great, Doug, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, that's great. So um, I've signed it here, I'll actually just pass it around. And we will move on to our next agenda item. The uh, review and approve the annual town meeting warrants for, that should be warrant for October 19th, 2020 at 6 p.m. at Bartlett High School, 52 Lake Parkway in Webster. 
and Doug has separately sent out the warrant. It's not a significantly large one. Yeah, so <coughs> I received comments from town council today. So sorry. Uh, so I emailed out a copy on Friday. Uh, this is slightly revised. We'll go over the revisions um, as we meet. Doug, on, just a quick question on this one. Um, so if this does get passed as a bylaw, um, we would obviously have to put appropriate signage on Lake Street anyway that it's coming to and from, because uh, generally the trucks are going to, Doug, to Dudley and then they're sometimes returning from Dudley. Yeah, that's correct. And, and it's not just uh, trucks that are going to Ramco, it could be other ones that are making deliveries elsewhere, but uh, this would be specific, uh, not specific, would be town line. Okay. So we would post at near or at the town lines. Uh, also, we would post it in some of our areas that have high traffic. So on Main Street here would be an area where we do that. Thank you. Question? Yeah, Tom. Uh, they're not going to be allowed at all because uh, it says in here, if such device or devices result in excessive loud or otherwise unusual device, how do you measure that? Yeah, so Tom, that's actually one of the lines our uh, the attorney recommended to scratching because it, uh, it was very hard to measure. Uh, so right now, it would just be any use of it would be uh, prohibited unless it was in case of an emergency. Uh, so uh, I mean, the police department will use discretion when enforcing this. They'll they'll give people a warning. But if it continues, they will start enforcing the fine. So uh, as long as it's not an emergency, it would be in a situation where it could be enforceable. Okay, Lisa, question. So do we have any businesses in town that are dependent upon deliveries from trucks of this stat status? You know, what impact will this have on potential local businesses that are dependent? Yeah. So, the trucks can still make all their deliveries. They just uh, would have to drive through town a little slower so they would not be forced to use their, okay. with their engine brakes to slow down. Uh, I, they, the vast majority of the complaints are dump trucks going through town to Dudley. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's my understanding, Doug, is in essence, trucks are going too fast, and this helps them to slow down yeah. um, instead of just using their regular brake or gearing down. Yes, exactly. Um, and that's what, I mean, I've been, I'm sure we've all been in oh, town yeah. hall, yeah. Um, and yeah. literally the windows will rattle on some of the, on some of the trucks. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Anything else? Anything else? No. Uh, so Article 6, uh, there was some hesitation <laughs> and trepidation to put this on there, 
But we have, we've recently had a few issues with people maintaining chickens in uh, smaller lots, um, like in the neighborhood of Granite Street, those are all, most of them triple deckers, multi-family residential, uh, and they have chickens, which uh, they're very small lots, uh, and we've had trouble with enforcing those. Uh, but our proposal is to switch that from uh, just right now, it can be in any residential zone, but we're proposing to change it to only agricultural single-family residential and uh, restricting them uh, to no roosters and that they have to be in a coop of some sort, no free-range chickens. <laughs> so that, that is a proposal that uh, our development team came up with, which we can take it or leave it, but we can also discuss potential changes to that. Can, can we talk a little bit more about that now? Or Absolutely. So, I think it's a good time to so ask questions. When you say that it was proposed, what, what, what drove it? Was this a situation on Granite Street? Like, and, uh, and do we know if we have other people in town that aren't in these zones? And now what will be the impact on them? I'm, yeah, so. This is just a hot topic already in Dudley, so. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of issues that are currently a problem. And, and they actually are not abiding by the current bylaw. They have more than the six chickens already. Uh, but just it came to our attention, like even if you kept only six chickens on some of these smaller lots in town, uh, especially if there's multi-family uh, living in those on those lots, like uh, how do you distinguish, like, okay, each family gets two chickens, or does each family in the house get the six chicken chicken allotment? Uh, and we just felt that there really shouldn't be chickens in some of these neighborhoods that are uh, so small that. It's not a, a very pleasant experience for all the neighbors that have to deal with the chickens, the smells, the noises. Uh, so that's why we propose to restrict it to only agricultural single-family residential. So Doug, did you say as of now people are doing this and they're not abiding by, in other words, they're just allowing the hens to run? Yeah, so they right now the, the town bylaw regarding chickens is that you can have six on your property. Um, and so. There, there is no coop requirement right now, so they could be a free ranging, uh, roaming. Thanks, Carol. Uh, but in the case of Granite Street, they're actually not, they're not abiding by the bylaw, that they're not current. cooped up. They're actually- They're not cooped up, and they have well over 100 chickens. So- 100 chickens. Yeah, that, that's a situation that's been addressed, and they have been removed from site, but- uh, that was an I was extreme gonna, situation. I was hoping that code enforcement has already dealt with that. Yes, yeah. Now, are there other situations in town that have prompted problems? Yeah. And so it wasn't just that one. We've had a couple of others. Um, and we felt like uh, if you're going to be raising chickens on your home, you should have a large enough lot to do that and, and in an area that's appropriate for it. Uh, so that's why we came up with that designation. And now doesn't require uh, caged animals? No. Okay. Well, it, the current bylaw says hens must be confined at all times and not permitted to run at large, right? That's what the current that bylaw current says. Bylaw. At number eight, which is being struck Sorry. according to this yeah. request. All right. Or am I must reading be that wrong? Oh, wait. Yes. My bad. So they, uh, the situations we've dealt with, they were not confined. <laughs> But so I guess that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it because they're not abiding by the current bylaw? So that is definitely I true. mean, obviously, if they're free-ranging on property, their, their smell and yeah. feathers and everything else is going to disperse. Yeah. But I'm wondering if they are, as they're supposed to be, six chickens in a confined area, if that would have alleviated any, any of the issues that, that have come to your attention? Yeah, certainly if they, they had six in the confined area, it would have been much less of a problem. Um, but as we dealt with these issues, we thought they shouldn't be here. Six, even six chickens shouldn't be here uh, um, in some of these neighborhoods. So I, it, it's certainly a hot topic and maybe not something that we need to address, but uh, it may be we can try to 
more strictly enforce the existing bylaw before we make any changes, but that was a recommendation from the development team. No, I, I, I'm aware of at least one house, I don't think that they are in an agricultural area that keeps chickens cooped, mm -hmm. um, and I don't believe they've had any problems. So you may very well have issues it, yeah, with people yeah. who are doing it now very in accordance with our bylaw. Yeah. Perhaps maybe a, uh, a compromise would be keep it the existing six, uh, but no roosters. That seems to be oh, okay. the, the typical, uh, what causes most of the problems. Oh yeah, that's the noise factor too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So uh, it's up to the board, but if you wanted to change I this article. I thought hens doesn't mean roosters. <laughs> well, it's six lane hens. That is true too, so <laughs> we can. I mean, I, I can see double, you know, yeah, we no can, roosters, I mean. Well, it, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to town meeting just to say no yeah. roosters when it already yeah. says six lane hens. Well, right. I, I think, Doug, the, the concern I have, or the question I have is the language is exactly the same. If you remove the language in, in parenthetical number four, no roosters permitted, it reads the exact same way as the current bylaw reads. Yeah, ex yeah, so the only difference is that instead of being in any residential zone, it could only be an agricultural single family. Yeah. I understand, but I, yeah. the, the concern was there are people who, don't, who currently have chickens that are yep. not in agricultural and yep. are not causing that, any problems. Right, right. And so if we removed the roosters, basically it's what it, it is It's today. the same thing. Hmm. I get, I, and what, what, from a zoning standpoint, what is District 2? Where is that? Agricultural single family, uh, it's mostly the east side of town. I think yeah, I, I can pull it'd up be the, easier, I think, if Doug does have a zoning map, at least on the assessor's site. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can spin it around, Doug, that's fine. So single family is covered it, by it, this. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the gray areas. Uh, so this kind of uh, going out on Sutton Road area um, and a lot of the east side of the town is agricultural single family. Um, and there's a little bit of it looks like along Lake Parkway. Yeah, down On here either and, side, yep. Yeah. I think perhaps let's hold off on this, try to enforce the existing one a little more fully, uh, and then if it continues to be a problem, we can address it at a future town meeting. I agree. Yeah, if you would just, if you can move the pictures over, just want to check one address here. So Upper Gore, okay. So the folks that I'm aware of, they may actually already be in agricultural single-family residential oh, I think I know some people up off of um, past Kmart too what does that look like that wouldn't be Kmart, right? uh, depends on where that's they are. single family residential so yeah. that would be an issue yeah. Tim go ahead you have a question wouldn't it be more appropriate instead of I think instead of the zoning district shouldn't it be based on your lot size like i mean if you're in and there probably aren't very many but if i lived downtown and i had say an acre or an acre and a half i don't think it would be fair for you to tell me i can't have hens and then have someone in a different part of town only have a quarter of an acre mm -hmm. but because of their resident you know their districting uh I, so i I'm just curious, is there anything in the, I, and, I, and maybe there is, I just don't know, is there anything in the zoning? I think lot size would be, would be a more appropriate designation than your district. I mean, just, just by the district, you're gonna rule out, you know, there's probably not too many lots in that area anyways, but. I think it's a good point and something that should be taken into consideration. Um, 
But another point is when you have a, a, a multifamily house, and you know this is an economical thing where they're trying to raise hens to have eggs to eat, yeah. um, not necessarily sell. And now you know, so we're restricting it to people with larger lots of land and basically restricting it um, from someone who's living in a multifamily. Yeah. I don't know how that's handled now with a landlord, if they even allow it. But that's something I think if we can go back and do some more research I think, on yeah. it. I think there's plenty of ways to, to fine tune this uh, if we have to. But I think enforcement currently is probably the first, yeah. first uh, step of the current policy. I think that makes sense. I, I mean, our, our thought was, you know, they're an agricultural use. Let's put them in an agricultural zone. But yeah, yeah. there's more to it, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I and chickens are very sensitive, so <laughs> we could just drop that one. Especially roosters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was Article Six. So um, we. Do you want to take a vote on each one? Do you want to we'll do it at the end and then if we? Yeah, have let's a, review them all and then we can make a vote. Uh, let me pull this back up. So Article Seven. So Article 7, uh, we have been approached by uh, a marijuana dispensary company that uh, would like to operate a delivery only business out of the town of Webster. Uh, so that would provide a lot of advantages to the town of Webster in that uh, there would be no traffic uh, other than a, a fleet of vehicles which you know, we could set a limit on it but maybe, you know, four or five, maybe six vehicles. Uh, but any sale that was made throughout the state of Massachusetts, we would get the 3% sales tax no matter where, what town that was located in. Uh, so if we were to do this, um, we'd like to add a third retail license and then make it specific that would only be for a delivery business and that it would, that delivery business would still have to be in one of the two zones that we previously created. Uh, for marijuana dispensary. Uh, and Doug, if I could, I'm actually, yeah. I, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion because I believe the company that's interested is represented by um, a business that I have a relative in, so. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so there's a, yeah, the, the business is looking to go into the Kmart Plaza, uh, rent one of the storefronts. Uh, they would essentially be storing one day's amount of marijuana in the in the building and then loaded up into the vehicles in the morning and it would be dispersed throughout the state uh, and then another shipment would come that day and uh, be stored overnight again uh, so that's their business model that they plan on moving forward with uh, but we we've We've already issued one of our retail licenses to a company that is opening very soon in the Kmart Plaza, and we've also been in contact and are going over a draft host agreement for another one in our other zone up by uh, Town Forest Road. So in order to do this, we would need a third license. Is this uh, one that is going to be uh, delivering sales? They related it all to the other retail that's going into the Kmart Plaza. Uh, no, it, it, it's a different company, uh, but uh, under the the requirements of the state, there were this new storefront. If they were to go in, they're they're not allowed to you know advertise that's a marijuana company. So on their building or their vehicles, you would have no idea uh, that it was specific to marijuana. And so, Doug, they're not restricted in terms of where they can deliver to in the state. They can deliver anywhere. They just have to operate out of this location for their sales. Correct. Yeah. Now, how many license, liquor licenses have we? Because uh, I know that it was a tie. It was tied to the liquor licenses. Yep. And I so, know we've had some increases. Uh, well, it's based on package store liquor licenses. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. we have eight. Uh, so twenty percent is that's how we got to the two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, firstly, I think uh, this is an ideal situation. There, 
it doesn't have any of the drawbacks of having a retail dispensary, but it gets all of the benefits. <laughs> I don't know how a full computer can go <laughs> so quickly. Courtney, would you yeah. Can you get it from my office? Yeah. Right. Are there are any other questions regarding Article 7? And I assume this is allowed under Mass State law for the delivery? It is. I think his system just crashed. Yep. I, uh, so I used this the other day. That it was the for shortest hours. morning I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, that's but, um, I'll send a note to Tom to tell him we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll take a, a quick um, Carol, five minute recess. He ran down to the. Huh. Carol, back there. Oh, she's there. Can you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Do we want Thank you, Andrew. You can just unmute yours. And we'll switch back over, uh, Dougie, and listen to lead us into Article 8. Let me share this again. So Article 8, we've been approached by uh, a not-for-profit that would like to uh, operate a futsal, which is uh, mini soccer, basically. Uh, how they'd like to repurpose and redo the uh, tennis courts at the Ray Street fields and uh, change them so people could play futsal there. 
Uh, they're proposing kind of a similar situation to what we do with Little League, where uh, you know, the, the town owns the fields, uh, but they actually, uh, I don't think that's the way it works here <laughs> in Webster, but with our, our softball league, the town owns the field, uh, but they kind of lease it from the town, they operate it, they take care of it. Uh, so that's kind of the general idea that what they're looking to do as well. Um, so they're looking to put upwards of uh, $50,000 worth of money into those tennis courts to improve them. Uh, so ultimately this would, article would allow the Board of Selectmen to enter into a lease under terms that you are considered favorable. Any questions? I was just wondering, uh, I'm not familiar with futsal, but uh, I assume if it's like soccer there's multiple players and I'm just worried about parking. Yeah, uh, that area has uh, quite a bit of parking in front there, uh, and there's parking on the other side uh, where the other softball fields are. Uh, I mean, it could be up to you know, 10 players on a court, so, but you could fit 10 car cars there at that parking lot. And, and Doug, how long? Have any, oh, go ahead, uh, sorry. And how long a lease are they looking to engage in? Yeah, so. They want to borrow money to upgrade the facilities, uh, so they need a 10-year lease to, in order to borrow the money. Lisa and Juba. I was just curious, do we have any insight into what seasons they're going to operate there? Uh, I think they want to do a fall league and a spring league. So I, I think they want to make good use of it. Uh, my concern was that if if we let them improve it and use it, obviously we let them kind of have first dibs on when it's being used, but if they're not using it, uh, I think the public should be allowed to use it any time, so like they shouldn't be able to lock those, those gates. And um, They even said uh, if tennis is still a priority for us, we can make it so tennis um, poles can be installed in there and they can just put a cover over the the holes so we could at any time put it back to a tennis court but the painting would be specific to this futsal uh, but if we needed to we could change it back what age group of kids I'm just curious I, I don't know anything about uh, I, I think they're looking to do all kids and an adult adults oh, as well okay. Okay. and they're, they're gonna have a fee structure of some sort huh. yeah uh, right much like little league softball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So today's softball, that's a nonprofit that um, basically gets the teams together, charges a fee, and um, that they take care of all the expenses, taking yeah. care of the field. Right. The, I did look at the courts. They're in terrible shape. I mean, you're talking three inch wide gaps. Um, so it will take a lot of work. You, you cannot use them as they are today. Yeah. So I think unless the, the only way to use them is if someone comes in and, um, you know, does this through a nonprofit or if the town does it. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I, I wonder if you can even do it for $50,000, but. Yeah. And Doug, one last question. This organization has their own liability insurance to cover that? Yeah, they would. And, and that would be part of a, yeah. a lease agreement. And I think in this, Doug, I think it's a great idea and really happy to see a, you know, kind of a public-private partnership. Um, but we should at least get some idea of the details. You know, a term lease of only 10 years, that's not a lot of time to recover a $50,000 investment. Yeah, I agree. So they may, they may need a, a longer lease, depending upon how many people, you know, can, will yeah. they expect to play in it. But. Yeah, it, this could, uh, at the current time, if they lease it, it would only be used for, for the futsal or anybody else that, if it wasn't being used for futsal at any particular time, other people could use it, other members of the town could use that area? Correct. I, when they approached me about it, I said that would be a priority to me, and I would assume the rest of the Board of Selectmen, that if they weren't specifically using the other members of the public could. Would that be a problem for their insurance? Uh, I think their insurance would only cover their operations, yeah. and we are the town's liability insurance would cover it for other times. 
anything else? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing we'd have to factor for is if the investment they make in improving it, if there are then damages, if someone else were to use it, then who would be responsible for those repairs at that time? Yeah, and, and also in the lease agreement, you'd have to figure out if there was an early termination, you know, the, are there any required paybacks of, of the money, if they, especially if they've got a, a loan on the property. Yeah. Uh, so I think we it's can, a great idea. Yeah, we can hash out uh, lease terms, but this would, uh, under Mass General Law, the town meeting has to approve any long-term lease, so, or has to at least authorize it so the, the board could approve it. And I do know the gentleman from the organization that's looking to do this is a local Bartlett High School alumni who used to play soccer for the town of Webster as well. That's great. Any right. further questions on Article 8? Go ahead, Doug. Uh, Article 9 uh, is to fund a, a truck for the water department, so we would be taking 65 Sorry, $65,000 from the water filtration plant fund and using it for the, a pickup truck. If you recall, uh, two, or maybe three years ago, uh, right before the water plant construction started, uh, town meeting set aside $350,000 uh, for kind of a contingency from their retained earnings. Uh, so the vast majority of that is still available and so we'd be using 65,000 of it to fund this truck. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, next one, Article 10. This is an article which would uh, allow us to borrow money for water distribution improvements. Uh, this is sponsored by the Water and Sewer Commission, as was the other one. Uh, but the, the plan is to do uh, Lincoln, Whitcomb, and Nelson Streets uh, this ne upcoming summer, and it will provide the payment for it. We approved $130,000 at the June town meeting to fund the engineering for this, so that's ongoing. They are working on getting us an accurate uh, cost estimate that we will have for our town meeting. Um, do we have a general idea, Doug? <laughs> is, yeah. it, is it in accordance with, I know that there's a capital expenditure plan that Water Sewer Commission has approved. Is right. it within yeah. the... Right. So uh, the plan was every two years to borrow roughly $2 million. Okay. Uh, so it, it would generally follow that plan. Thank you. Uh, uh, I should mention, uh, Tim brought this up to me. He said, you know, in the future, going forward, as we're looking to borrow money every two years, maybe it makes sense to find a way to, uh, rather than borrowing it, we find a way to pay for it out of pocket and avoid the interest fees for the next you know, 50 years, because this is a plan we want to be doing going forward. So uh, that's something we're going to look out, see when debt falls off, and see when we'd be able to fund things more directly out of cash. Uh, but I think it's important to do these projects that we've been saying we're going to do and uh, right now the only way to do that is through a, a long-term borrowing uh -huh. <laughs> anything you want just to add basically no, i'm just curious fees. how that would work uh. right so right now uh, last year retained earnings were certified at roughly a million dollars um if we got, for water sewer what's that for water sewer for for, for water town. For water, yeah. For water. Okay. Uh, so if we had another generous uh, amount of retained earnings, we say, okay, you know, maybe over the next year we'll purposely save money so we can, our next $2 million uh, batch, we're going to pay for it in-house with the cash on hand rather than borrowing it. Okay. Um, and then we, we just have to double check the fee structure to make sure we can <laughs> cover yeah. that going forward. Uh, and I'm trying to recall exactly when some of the water sewer projects fall off the debt, or sorry, when the water projects water, fall off yeah. the debt schedule, because yeah. so, that would be an ideal time. It's like, oh, if we're no longer paying this uh, $200,000 payment every year, yeah. that can go directly to uh, cash capital projects. Yeah. I think Tim had it. I think, if I may add, 
So just kind of what I was looking at, the reason I, I mentioned it to Doug is, I, I believe kind of what the Water and Sewer Commission has said is to replace the mains, it would take like 50 years. And if we're gonna have, if, if that's the ultimate goal, then I feel we should just fund it primarily through user rates, because if you keep borrowing, I mean, you're then gonna be in this cycle where not only are you paying the principal, but you're paying the interest. So it's gonna, over time, it's gonna cost the users more money. So if we could get, kind of somehow bridge that intermediate period with some combination of financing and retain earnings, yeah. and, and, and maybe gradually, if we have to, increase the user fees, we can get there where we're funding the capital on an annual basis, and then, you know, in the long run, we'll be saving everybody money because we wouldn't have to pay the interest on the actual, you know, principal of the cost. And that's especially important after we get out of this low interest rate environment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's always going to be a low interest rate environment. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we could uh, <laughs> invite you to uh, a, a meeting so that we could, you know. Yeah, and, and I spoke with the water superintendent today, and, um, you know, how could we make that work? And a lot would depend on when the existing capital projects fall off the debt payment schedule. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's how do you come up with that initial big chunk of right. money yep. that's needed, or how do you build the retained earnings? You've got to build it through the user. There's no other way around it. Right. right. And we don't necessarily want to not do any projects for four or five years and save all the money up. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right. Uh, so Article 11, this would be to borrow funds for town hall roof improvements. Uh, so two years ago, we got a grant from the state uh, to design uh, improvements to town hall. And this past year, we got a grant to fund a very small portion of it, but $55,000 for improvements to town hall. Uh, and so the, the architect's recommendation was that we focus on the roof, uh, both the slate roof here and also the rubber roof that's over the auditorium and the clock tower as well. So they're putting together uh, a project of roughly six hundred to $650,000 uh, to improve the roof. Uh, and so we'd be looking to borrow those funds at town meeting or to receive authorization to do it. We have a funding source from the landfill that we receive. Uh, it's a roughly sixty-five thousand dollars. Does that ring a bell? It's right around fifty-three to fifty-five thousand, or or that per year. <laughs> yeah, per year. And so, uh, if we were to borrow these funds for say a twenty-year period, that would more than cover the interest payment, the debt and interest payments for that. So we could um, not have it directly affect the town operating budget. How, um, how Doug or Tim, these? how much money is in that account now? Because we've been putting money in those, into that uh, account. But we've been using it for the basement uh, and other. There's not a lot left Not in a it? lot. Okay. Uh, it's, I believe, if I remember correctly, we usually receive it right around now, isn't it? Between now it, and It's october yeah. Yeah, and then we usually gets transferred to the town hall construction funds. Yeah. You know, probably 99% of it gets transferred or whatever. So if it all worked out, you could do a 10-year or maybe a 12-year and amortize it that way and then have the monies come in basically matching the right. debt payments. Yeah. yeah, so and the lease, uh, I'll, I'll have to double check. It, it's at least 10 more years, right? Probably more like 15 years, so. Um, Article 12. Uh, so we have been approached by Goya Foods. Uh, they would like to expand their operations and build an additional warehouse. Um, I sent a copy of the letter around. 
Yeah. Uh, they're looking to expand. I gave everyone my one. It's 120,000 square feet of additional space. Um, if you've been up there, right behind their building, they own another lot, which is uh, somewhat graded that they would put this on. It's a roughly $5 million investment. And they're looking for a, a tax increment financing agreement with the town. Um, in their proposal that you received, they've asked for a um, over 10 years to re reduce it each year by 10% of the, the exemption amount. So if you look here, uh, the first year, the way they propose it is uh, the full $5 million investment would be exempt. Uh, but the year two, only 90% would be exempt, and so the town would get $7,000 out of the uh, out of what could be $76,000. Uh, and if you we go down to the last year, uh, they'd be paying 68 of the $76,000. Uh, I don't know why this one. Let me scroll down, but uh, it's the way they have it proposed. It's roughly half of what. They would be paying what well, a full payment would be versus what they're proposing over um, that period. Oh, yeah, over the 10 years. Uh, so when they request a TIF, they have to certify to the State Department of Economic Development that if it was not for this TIF, they would not be moving forward with the project. This is kind of what is the make or break and pushes them over the edge. Um, we've talked about it uh, internally. Uh, there is. Uh, strong support from both economic development and uh, the town assessor that this is a project worth moving forward on. Uh, Goya has been an excellent partner in town uh, and we think it, it, if it truly is uh, without this TIF we would not be moving forward. This is a, a, a kind of a no-brainer situation that, that, that we should move forward with that. So roughly speaking, Doug, over, over time, it looks like um, $766,000 would be the, uh, at current assessed value, current rate tax rates, uh, would be the 10-year cost of it. And you're saying roughly, we would lose roughly half, half of, of that, that amount, yeah. um, you know, or $380,000 or so um, on a declining scale because we would lose, we would get nothing for taxes the first year, yeah. 76000 and so this is, uh, the article allows the Board of Selectmen to negotiate the agreement. Uh, and as part of the agreement, I would actually push back. I don't think there should be any year where we don't receive any right. additional right. tax revenue. Uh, but that's what their initial proposal was. And, and I, I think if this does, go ahead, Tom, sorry. Would the construction have to be completed before they get any tax breaks? Yes, uh, it's contingent on a certificate of occupancy. Um, and I looked at other TIFs. Uh, this proposal of roughly 10% being reduced each year from the exemption amount is pretty standard. Um, I forget the, the town, it's up by Lowell, uh, but they have an Amazon warehouse coming into their town. They did, a, something similar over 10 years rather than every year went down 10 percent every two years it went down 20 percent so but essentially the same idea yeah. uh, that that's kind of standard for at least a starting point for towns and companies to dis discuss a tiff yeah i think the only the other tips in town uh, we have had tiffs they have all expired or, or gone through their full process yeah, I think one of the things to consider with a TIF too is is whether or not we have any um, impact on our infrastructure with regards to water sewer, which I don't think there would be any, um, but road improvement, traffic flow, et cetera. Right. It's so it's in a good location, and, and uh, Goya has been a very good, as you said, a very good partner. Yeah, uh, that's a very good point. So as far as impacts to the town, it, it is quite minimal. It would be uh, more trucks traveling on. Goya Road or Drive, um, but there is, it's a very short distance where they're even on town roads before they get back onto 395. Uh, that whole area up there does have water and sewer, uh, and there would be no 
road infrastructure that the town would need to put in. It's uh, off of their existing driveway. Right, and it would be a, a de minimis amount of impact on water and sewer because you're only going to be adding 20 more. 20 more people is no things to be dumped there uh, from the trucks. Right, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only impact is you're going to have to travel a half mile down Cudworth Road, which is what happens today. But you could potentially be doubling traffic. the amount of traffic. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the, the zoning, Doug, for that, um, on that side of Cudworth Road, as you're heading towards Oxford, towards the highway, is that all? That's industrial. industrial? That, that lot is specific. I, let me pull up the... Um... Isn't there a residential on that side, though? I think there was a house. That, that, there is a house right there on that corner. Um, I think it's got a for sale sign. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to me, the question is, is it zoned industrial? It, it isn't. This is all zoned industrial. OK. Uh, so the lot that they're specifically looking at is this one Could right here. Could you make here. that a little bigger, Doug? Uh, yes. Uh, there you go. So the uh, so, peach colored, hashed, hashed and peach colored? Yeah, so peach is industrial. The hash is the water protection overlay. Okay. Uh, so the current building is this one right here. And so they would use the existing building and come up here uh, to access it. And I think, um, Earl, you were referring to the fact that there might be a house right at the corner of Cudworth and Goya? This, this is a house, yeah. Uh, in, in the past, they have expressed concern, like, um, like there were trucks starting early in the morning, like 6 a.m., turning on, warming it up. Uh, we spoke with Goya, and they were good about uh, you know, being considerate neighbors, and it has non, been a non-issue since. Any further questions on the TIF? I mean, it is something that um, it's great to bring and expand uh, companies in. It does cost money to do it. But on the other hand, there is a, an economic benefit of having more employees, even though it's a small, relatively small number of employees, 20 yeah, or so still. additional employees. And I think it's really important, that, as Doug had talked about, um, to get an idea of what other towns are doing, because this could be on the rich side is, as it you know, being the first proposal that they've put forward. Um, Doug, the, the details of that would be allowed to be approved by the selectmen, correct? Right. So this would be an omnibus kind of vote to authorize the selectmen to negotiate through the town administrator. Correct, okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Article 13. This is a citizen's petition. Um, it is in regards to our temporary repairs of private ways bylaw. Uh, currently, it reads two thirds of the uh, the abutters need to approve the bylaw, and they would like to reduce that down to 50% of the linear frontage. You said bylaw, Doug. You mean to approve a project, correct? Yeah, yeah. To the under the bylaw to approve the project, you need two thirds. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly, when the original bylaw vote was presented at town meeting, it did say fifty percent of the lineal frontage. But then, after quite a lengthy discussion by the town meeting attendees, it was amended on the floor to increase it to a two thirds majority. That is correct. correct. If I remember correctly, uh, there, at that particular town meeting, when, this, uh, when the increase of 50% to two-thirds uh, amendment came up, there was also another amendment that was tied into that. So you're having, there were two reasons to, to approve that particular vote. Uh, that is also true, because they, the, it was amended to include primary lineal frontage and not just because right. potentially you could have two sides and have to pay double what anyone else would. And especially if the land wasn't contoured to use it, that part of the road, if I remember, yep. it was off of Lower Gore was the example. Have, Doug, have, any, um, have there been any um, projects that have gone through yet? 
based on our bylaw that we had approved? There have not. The two thirds makes it uh, quite difficult to, to get approval. Yeah. Yep. Okay, any further questions on Article 13? And that's a citizen's petition. I'm, gu I'm just curious, uh, for the sake of, you know, if, if down the road in the future, if there was two pieces of property equal length, should it should it say greater than 50 percent or? Uh, so I it mean, says signed by owners of no less than 50 percent. Yeah, yeah, but you could have a situation. I'm saying where where 50 percent would want it and 50 percent wouldn't. Would would. <laughs> Yeah. So if it was exactly 50, I'm just saying, just yeah. for wording's sake. Yeah, I, you could say than 50. Uh, greater, but I don't think we can amend the citizens' petition. Oh, so that oh, would be okay. a floor. Right. I, I don't believe so. on, on the, the floor, floor it could be amended, but in the warrant, yeah, you would you would word it that greater than 50, at least 50 percent. Greater than which 50%. would be greater than yeah, or greater than so 50%, yeah, 50.1 50. percent would be yeah, greater than 50 percent. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we, um, we also had a second citizen's petition. This was actually uh, new that was certified today. So we, um, Article 14 is to amend the wetlands protection bylaw. Uh, so it, really the only change that they're proposing is at, at the beginning it says, a list with a minimum of three or more outside consultants shall be provided by the commission for the applicant to choose from. In the existing bylaw, let me pull it up. Uh, it says, outside consultants shall be chosen by the commission. So that they're requesting that rather than the commission choose the one, that there be an option of three and the applicant gets to choose one of the three. Uh, I did speak with the uh, the Conservation Commission agent today, she said, you know, in the big scheme, that's not a big deal. Um, that's not the way it works with other town departments. Like, uh, if you're going to a planning board, you go with the town's engineer, not your, an engineer of your choice. Um, but it, it wouldn't be a, a big deal, <laughs> really. So, Doug, normally what you see in here is if, is there any language struck? It doesn't look like there's any language that's being struck. Right. So this is, where is exactly. It okay. Where is it described where the changes? So if it gets to the warrant, so the public is going to ask, what's the change? Yeah. So uh, I have to put it on exactly how it was submitted, but the, the change is that first sentence is being changed from this outside consultant shall be chosen by the commission and it's being changed to uh, a list of three or more okay. consultants. And then the rest of the It is exactly is the, the same. Right. Okay, yep. thank you. Yeah, so basically strike out outside consultants shall be chosen by the commission yeah. and insert a list with a minimum of three or more. So when I make a motion, that's how I'll make the right. motion. Okay. Yeah, normally the citizen's petition would right. actually state that, but. Correct. Okay. Any further questions on this? Just curious, will the commission make a recommendation uh, at the town meeting? Or? Um, I don't think they will make a recommendation. I think they will uh, address it and say it's not required of other town boards. Okay. Uh, but I think that's the extent. I don't. I don't think they're looking to pick a fight. And Doug, it's not on the warrant, but um, many people have been asking if the if the setback was good. so it, clearly because the setback proposal is not on the warrant, it's not going to be in front of the uh, October 10th. And they meeting. took a specific vote to delay it and bring it up again at a time where there's. Uh, more opportunity to do an educational okay. background beforehand. Thank you. Perhaps spring. Yep. Um, that is the last article on the town meeting warrant. If I could make a recommendation that the board of selectmen. Uh, hey, hey, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, this time. I'm going to have to recuse myself on Article 13 because that could 
in the future, uh, since I live on Cracker Road, that this would apply to, and I'm going to recuse myself on Article 13. Okay. Okay. And, and I, my recommendation was going to be for Articles 13 and 14 that the board make no uh, vote and refer to the sponsor. So yeah. our vote, okay. our, our motion would be to refer to sponsor, which yeah. is typical of citizens' yeah. petitions. And then, and Tom will ha you will will have you recuse on you can re still recuse on uh, thirteen if you wish. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Well, we're going to uh, vote for all fourteen articles, including the warrant. Yeah, so I think we're going to go through them now and and. Um, if we want to vote for the majority and then remove a couple, or we can just go one by one. It's probably easier. There's very few of them. Yeah, we can do one by one. So. Oh. We'll just need to take a vote on every one. That's the only problem. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree. Right. We can do one through five. Oh, one through five. Okay. okay. Any questions on articles one through five? If not, I'll entertain a motion for I'll approval. make a motion to approve Article 1 through 5. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on Articles 1 to 5? Courtney, would you poll the board, please? Clark and Claybert? Yes. Clark and Pontus? Yes. Clark and Moore? Yes. Clark Yes. 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 So, Article 6, I would recommend that the Board of Selectmen not approve that to be on the town meeting warrant. So make a, yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion to uh, eliminate Article 6 from this town meeting warrant. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and that answers my question, um, would it be eliminated? So this would just go away. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Courtney, would you pull the board regarding Article 6 to have it removed from the warrant? Selecting Yes. Selecting Yes. Selecting Moore? Yes. 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 And just for clarification, the selectmen can request that it be withdrawn because we're the sponsor of the article. Yep. Yeah. For those that are watching. Uh, and then I would recommend articles 7 through 12 that the Board of Selectmen approve and recommend approval. If I could, please, Doug, if I would ask you to take Article 7 separately, which sure, I yeah, will yeah. recuse myself from, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Sorry, let's do I'll 7. Make yeah. a motion to approve Article 7 on the town warrant. Second. I have a motion and a second to, for the Board of Selectmen to recommend approval of Article 7 for the town meeting warrant. Is there any discussion? Okay. And this is understood that we will, re we will renumber them appropriately. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, Courtney, will you pull the board? Selectman Claybert? Yes. Selectman Contos? Yes. Selectman Moore? Yes. Selectman Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, I recommend passage of 8 through 12 as currently numbered. Okay. I'll make a motion to recommend Article 8 through 12 as currently numbered. We have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve and recommend articles 8 through 12. Any further discussion? Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Selectman Claybert? Yes. Selectman Pontus? Yes. Selectman Gabor? Yes. Selectman Nolbert? Yes. Chairman Yes. If we can separate article 13. Yeah. And article 13, I recommend that the selectman place it on the warrant but refer to sponsor. Any further discussion? Can I recuse myself from this vote? Yes. You are so noted as recused. Any further discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve Article 13 to appear. Uh, I think we're going to recommend. Refer to sponsor. Oh, yeah, sponsor. I make a motion to refer to sponsor. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to refer Article 13, citizens' petition, to sponsor. Any further discussion? And Mr. Claybert is recused. Courtney, would you pull the board? Yes. 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 And article. Yeah. 
Yes. Same with Article 14. Approve to put on, place on the warrant, but uh, refer to sponsor. I'll make a motion to place Article 14 on the warrant and refer to sponsor. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Yes. 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 So, Doug, just a clarification. We are going to be signing the warrant tonight. We will cross out of there um, the article that was removed. Six. Yeah, if article you want to uh, sign the back page, we'll, we'll renumber and, and Remove correct that. it. Okay. Why don't you why don't you redo it because that will probably change, change the, the, the placement. Page. Yeah. And that way everybody doesn't just sign a blank yeah. page. We and will we can stop in the next day or two. Do you need it tonight? No, we are yeah, we could do it. Uh, we have plenty of time. Okay. okay. That um, takes care of the October nineteenth annual town meeting warrant. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the review, review and amend the personnel policies. Now I know um, it's actually stated on the date and stated right there. Um, I know some of us have seen these in the past. Um, Tom and Lisa, you, you, this is probably your first shot at looking at them. Um, I would like to thank again the personal advisory board, um, Doug, and I'm sure Tim had something, some work in this too, um, and a number of the town meeting employees, the, the town, uh, employees i believe what happens next doug is this is going to be reviewed with department heads or town employees yeah so uh it, it has been in place for about two years so the personnel advisory board would actually uh is planning on meeting with each department head maybe not each department but several department heads over the next coming months to review and make sure that it's meeting their needs and that uh uh, ask for any recommended changes or adjustments. Okay. So, I mean, what I would ask tonight is, is if anyone has any particular comments uh, to make on here, we can talk about them here if they're substantive. Um, and we'll probably have this item come back again once the review has been done by the personal advisory board. Yeah. So, uh, that may be a four to six month process. Okay. Um, anyone have any particular? Uh, questions, comments, changes they'd like to suggest? We can just go page by page if you want. Go ahead, Lisa. I just had a comment regarding page seven. And in light of what we just experienced with COVID, do we need to reconsider the definition um, as essential? In here, it's classified as someone who's been identified by their supervisor, the town administrator to be available on a 24 hour basis during the seasonal weather, you know, should we consider, is there an alternative definition based upon people who maybe need to be on site in situations like we just experienced? So just a, a thought. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's certainly targeted towards our most frequent <laughs> emergency item, which is a, a snow emergency. Oh, of course, of course, right. right. So, but uh, we can look at adjusting that to. I, I, I also just, uh, through the chair, I also just wonder on a, on a broader basis, uh, do we need to engage some pandemic uh, policy uh, in, in, in a broader perspective than, than the, the personnel policies. So. Yeah, uh, and Elaine, she's probably very excited that you said that because uh, that's one thing that the Personal Advisory Board has also talked about is um, what adjustments should be considered in light of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's something we plan on reviewing and uh, making recommendations for future changes. Yeah, I think beefing up the whole, you know, what's an emergency? And, and it's not mm -hmm. just a snow day. Um, we've had a tornado. <laughs> we've, we've had the pandemic. Um, but that would be good. And I'm sure that personal advisory board will be interested in, in adding that. Tim, did you have a? Um, I guess I would just like to state that I think almost less is more 
in regards to that, or could we? Um, because there's so much federal and state guidance. I, I mean, we weekly, maybe not daily, but weekly, we're referring to federal or state guidance. And it's always changing. So that's, I guess that's the only thing I would mention is if you're, if that's something that you're going to try to incorporate into this, uh, like I said, sometimes less is more. So I just think that to try to figure all that out and put it in a document like this will be a little bit difficult. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we can leave that to the personal advisory board to take that into consideration. But, you know, we do have known um, emergencies that we've had. So, you know, I think after talking with the department heads and then, you know, having the personal advisory board kind of kick it around, they'll come back with some recommendation. Yeah, and it, it might be as simple as we have snow non-essential and essential employees and then other emergency mm -hmm. yeah. or, or references to um, you know right. referring to applicable state or federal guidance mm -hmm. um, you know could be made in there as well so yeah I can see a I can see a smile on Elaine's face Elaine did you want to we'll let you comment as you're the chairman of the personal advisory board no I think we're just looking forward to um, to taking a good look at the um, policies now that they've been out for a while. The thing that struck me most was the emer emergency um, section is just pretty much dealing with snow. And if there's something that we've run up, in the town, up against in the town, we should be dealing with it. So we're going to look at that area and take into consideration every, everything you've said. I know there's a lot of federal guidance and state guidance, so we'll <laughs> see how we can best use it. Elaine's probably written some of it. <laughs> uh, I was going to make a joke about federal bureaucracy, but <laughs> I won't in front of Elaine. It was, it was something to do with, I'm here from the federal government, I'm here to help you. Yes. <laughs> She's heard that one before. Yeah. Lisa, thank you for that, for that comment. Do you have any others? Anyone else have others? Yeah, we can mostly certainly general, send. But you know, I was going to say, mostly in general, that's what came out at me is that this really changes how you view an essential employee, yep. as well as what Elaine said about emergencies. I thought the same thing. Yeah. So. And I think if anyone has anything in particular, send it to Doug if you could, um, because we want to have the most up to date one in here um, that can then be reviewed by the personal advisory board with department heads. I think, Doug, the last change I remember was the sick time. Um, and that is in here. Yeah, as, we amended it uh, in April of last year. Yeah, 19, I think it was. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion on this topic? Okay. All right, so we don't have any amendments, no vote to take on, on that. So uh, let's move on to the town minister report. Doug? So currently, the town of Webster is looking to have the trick, well, both the trunk or treat event and the Halloween night. Um, we will be doing our best to encourage people to do that safely, wear masks. Um, but uh, considering that they'll be outside, we think it's an event that we can uh, safely have in town. Uh, also, a reminder that we are closed on Monday, October 12th, for Columbus Day. And then the next Monday is town meeting, October 19th. And uh, uh, since Carol's here, we'll give her a shout out. She uh, is going to be holding an outdoor movie sometime soon, hopefully while it's still warm enough to be outside and enjoy the nice weather. Uh, but we have a blow up screen that was delivered and we uh, blew it up today. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so this first item, we found out roughly 5 o'clock this evening that uh, we received $1.3 million from the federal government in our SAFER grant for 
full-time staffing within the fire department for three uh, consecutive years. So that, that is a really awesome. big deal. Wow. Um, so Chief Hickey has, uh, well, he's been applying for this for several years now, and this is the year it came through for us. So this, um, we'll have to come up with a staffing plan and a way to use this. Uh, but uh, it covers, well, we haven't got the official notice, but we presume that it covers these firefighters for three years in full, including benefits. And after that, the town would have to pick up the cost of them. So it gives us a few years to ease into that and uh, find a way to fund it after the grant's gone. Is, it, is this for a third shift? Uh, it, it would be, yes, for 24-hour uh, staffing. Because yeah, okay. right, right now, to that point, right now it's a 16 hours. It's, do we have one person on in the station? after say 11 or so is that uh right from 11 to 6 a.m yeah there's uh there's not enough people to respond to a call they have to wait for uh someone else to re to come in i mean kudos to uh, chief hickey because this is something i know for the protection of our citizens that he's been pushing for for a long time three years will go by fast so we will have to have a plan yeah um but this is very welcome news yeah and you know, Chief Hickey is one of the calmest people I know, but uh, today I saw a lot of excitement out of him. Well, that's great news. Yeah. Uh, so under the police department, we had a, a lateral transfer from Wilbraham. Uh, Tom, and I forget how to pronounce his name, uh, Matoski or something like that, he started today. Uh, so he'll be coming before the Board of Selectmen, probably at our November meeting to be sworn in uh, and give a, a little face time. Uh, and then we wanted to mention that the Opening the Word Peer Recovery Center is having an open house and they're having a, a speaker and uh, ceremony at the French River Park on September 30th at 6 p.m. So here's the flyer for that. This will be a, a great event, and if you haven't seen their new facility on Main Street, it's beautiful, and it's uh, being used well, and it's busy, uh, and, that's, and they opened in the midst of the pandemic. So when things return a little bit back to normal, uh, I expect that they'll even be busier and be able to serve even more people. And just a quick comment. I mean, this, this is an incredible group. Um, Pastor Janice has done a great job. Um, and it's needed more than ever. And they're just yep. doing a God's work as far as I'm concerned. And um, it's also great to see that um, Chief Shah is very involved in it. And um, like uh, I said, it's an extremely important. Uh, he was pretty aspect. proud of his picture in the telegram today. He's like, I look pretty good in this. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very nice article today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, on the 30th, you'll also have the opportunity to hear from our chairman. So that'll be exciting. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, so great news with the Board of Health as well. We've had two weeks now, as of today, with no new positive cases. So there are, I believe, two previous cases which have not expired uh, from like the 14-day period. Uh, but. Uh, Hopefully we can keep it up, uh, and hopefully with the return of school and other things uh, ramping back up that we can stay that way. Uh, we talked a lot about the chickens, but we did, uh, we called in uh, MSPCA. They were able to come and help us address the situation with uh, 100 chickens and uh, took care of that. That was uh, a nightmare, but <laughs> it got resolved. Uh, so under our tax foreclosure sales, we had uh, 10 that were sold. Eight of them have actually closed. We're, we're waiting on the last two, but there, we don't see any reason why those last two won't close. So that'll be great. Uh, and we talked a little bit about the marijuana sales uh, for delivery. Uh, one of the other things that we're kind of dealing with is unemployment bills. So. We didn't get an unemployment bill from the state from May and through, well, what, two, three weeks ago we got it, and they gave us like four months worth at once. Uh, so we had to review. There's a lot of you know, claims that we uh, are a little bit suspect. A lot of the, there's a lot because we furloughed all of our employees, so we have to go through and sort those out. Uh, 
but we are working with our uh, consultant to make sure that we manage that. Uh, real quick, can you put the screen so Tom can see it? Oh. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so economic development, uh, I mentioned this at our last one, but we do have some interest. Uh, again, another restaurant has contacted me to potentially open up downtown. Uh, I mean, they were looking for a liquor license, which is kind of good news that uh, we thought ahead and we already requested the state to give us more. Uh, so hopefully that will be a, uh, a reason for them to want to come here versus another community. D Doug, regarding downtown, um, do you have a status on what is happening with Dunkin' Donuts? I've noticed the sign's been painted black, the, you know, yeah. other edge. Is something going in there, or is that just a temporary change in the exterior? So I talked to them two weeks ago. Uh, I, I, Dunkin' Donuts is not returning, um, but they, at the time, had several options, uh, but none had been solidified at that time. So uh, I can give them a call back. Um, I've referred people to them to potentially open something at that location. Um, but as far as I know, nothing has been solidified. Uh, but it's really, uh, well, in the middle of the painting, it's really ugly. So <laughs> hopefully they can uh, continue to, to work on that. Uh, we talked about the Goya. Uh, the Slum and Blight redevelopment area, uh, well, that had to be recertified, so they, they did an analysis and uh, were expanding it just slightly. So the, it ended at basically where the uh, Webster First Credit Union old site was at the intersection there. Now it'll just cover the whole intersection uh, going up East Main just slightly for like three or four properties. Um, and to, to encompass, for instance, the, there's a pizza place. Uh, yeah, it, it goes. Uh, parking lot. Probably to the it, I think it's just that parking lot. I don't think it even covers the pizza place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and nothing else has changed but that from the blight and redevelopment. Right. It, it, well, it includes on the other side uh, the building where the, the Rose Room is. Not that that's slum and blight, but that it does include that property. Okay. Uh, the uh, So back in the midst of in May, April and May, when uh, the coronavirus was at its height, uh, there was a process to apply for businesses to get funding through the CARES Act. Uh, so Carol Sear took that on actually as a reason, regional host for Webster and several other communities nearby. Um, we have actually not received that money yet, but it looks like we will in the next few weeks. Um, so when that comes available, we'll advertise it to businesses and they'll be able to apply for some of the lost revenue they had from back in April and May. And through now, as long as they've had uh, significant impacts due to COVID. Uh, one of the other things, uh, CMRPC, the local planning organization, uh, they have been a, uh, a host for a not-for-profit group that uh, the purpose of that group was to find ways to regionalize and uh, find efficiencies within local government. Uh, that not-for-profit group, I'm the only remaining board member. Everyone else uh, has, has been terminated from their jobs. So uh, <laughs> that group is really no longer in existence. So there were some leftover funds from that. And we're going to be moving those funds into an account uh, a grant account for local businesses to apply for to help with COVID. Uh, so that's an additional $50,000 that our businesses will be eligible to apply for. Uh, and I think they can apply for up to $2,000. Uh, on here, there is a several projects. I won't go through all of these, but they are progressing as they should. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I can't remember if I let you know that we received a $100,000 grant for the bridge going over the uh, over Sutton Road up on, if you're headed out of town that way, um, is it Sucker Brook that it goes over, I believe? And um, it was brought up that uh, the lake level seems uh, 
low, well, at a kind of an all-time low, maybe not all-time, but uh, extremely low this season. Uh, so the the gates are not flowing, so there is not water leaving. So it's really just the, the lack of rain and uh, that the reason the lake is so low at this point in time. And I, I did have the opportunity over the weekend um, to talk with Paula from Boys, and in addition to that, he said, you know, the lack of snow. So we didn't have the runoff from the snow, mm -hmm. and they had only opened the dam once, um, just to see if, if it makes sure it worked. So it didn't get stuck. Yeah. It wasn't stuck in place. But other than that, uh, it has not been opened since March. Yeah, and what I was told is even if you opened it, there's not enough water to flow through it. <laughs> we need rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I will say that, you know, in my recollection, it's been 25 years um, uh, only because my wife and I did a retention wall and the lake was this low 25 years ago. And two weeks after we put the retention wall in, the lake level was up a foot because two tropical storms had dumped their rain on us without much wind. But it does, you know, these are unusual fluctuations, but they do happen. Uh, I think, you know, we are, we been focusing more on our nuisance properties. Uh, so two that have been an issue that will come before the board is uh, 124 High Street, which came last December. Um, they you know, said they hadn't gotten certain letters, things like that. Uh, uh, we didn't go after them hard during the pandemic, but they have s since not been responsive. So we're going to bring them back before the board and uh, kind of I'll lay down the law, hopefully. And 136 Chase is also an, an issue that we need to address with the board. Uh, the primary was hold, held uh, was, uh, September 1st. Uh, we had over 2,500 voters. That's great news here in Town Hall. Um, that's much more than normal, and we expect the November election will also be very, very well attended, both in the couple of weeks prior with early voting and the day of so Doug, uh, do you know how many how many of the 2500 were in person versus mail-in uh, so I believe actually the 2500 were all in person that day uh, oh wow because um, were they add to they that were, the write-ins they were over a thousand I thought I don't want to make them up but I thought I remember asking Mr. Uh, Craver I'll email the I'll ask Bob and email out to the board but yeah I believe the 2500 was just that day those were that was on the board wow yeah, downstairs yeah. hourly counts be nice to know the total of voters yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely recall 1500 write-ins was the write-ins was the early voting not the write-ins but early voting and um, that's tremendous uh, mail-in voting but yeah Doug if you could I'll confirm, I'll confirm that, that and uh, really that there wasn't a lot of races on that uh, the ballot either, so it would, yeah, uh, yeah, for the November election, I expect to be very big. Uh, and just a, re a reminder: if you uh, want to register to vote, that needs to be done by Saturday, October 24th, and the application deadline to vote by mail is October 28th. And we will be having early voting again. It will be registered in the town clerk's office. This room will be made available. Uh, so people can vote at a safe distance away from each other. Uh, so, Great. any questions? The application deadline to request a mail-in is October 28th. Yeah, which that is, doesn't give much time to. No, no, no it doesn't. But that, that is state <laughs> that mandated. That seems really late. Yeah. And I believe I know we received in the last day or two. Yeah. The, the Secretary of State yeah, on um, you know, mail-in. So um, the only the only question I or actually comment a couple comments um, for Doug on his report. Um, I know I've had a, several people uh, mention to me that they wanted to express their thanks to Chief Shaw and to the boat patrol officers because uh, they've indicated it's been you know one of the best years ever as far as. Um, calming things down, jet skis, what have you, on the lake. So they wanted to express their appreciation for the boat patrol and everything that went on out there this year. Um, and then with Labor Day having come and gone now, the beach is closed. And just a final thank you to Carol and her staff um, for a very successful year. Next year will be interesting because we'll have a lot of improvements there. So um, buckle down, I guess, Carol. <laughs> you may have a lot more people, uh, but thank you for 
Thank you for a job well done and, and your staff that work there as well and with you know Kenny and the town departments as well. Those are my comments. Any other? I'd say kudos also for the retrieval of the car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, it's some interesting pictures, but yeah, they, they did a great job. Uh, oh, he doesn't know. I'm not aware. Oh, really? Th uh, there was, uh, what was it? I, I forget. O in Middle Pond, a, a car rolled into the lake over the weekend. Oh, yeah, I wasn't aware. Uh, Nobody got hurt. I, and it no, wasn't no an Amphicar either. Okay, mm. good. <laughs> I guess I'm a little late on the news. <laughs> so I'll share a few pictures post meeting. <laughs> it went pretty far in. It, it was, there only was only like six inches showing of the yeah. top of the car. Wow. Yeah. All right. Any further questions for Doug? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve his report. Motion to approve the town administrator's report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Selecting Clinger. Yes. Selecting Pontos. Yes. Selecting Board. Yes. Selecting Dolga. Yes. yes. Yes, and I'm not aware of any other items for our agenda, so I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. Courtney, would you pull the board, please? Selectman Claybar? Yes. Selectman Pontos? Yes. Selectman Moore? Yes. Selectman Dolga? Yes. Chairman Becker? Yes. And have a good night, everyone. Have a good evening.